Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Oh, hello. Um, not only really nervous, so I was back there, pretty nervous, checking, making sure everything was tucked in. And so I texted my dad, was like, I need to pray for me, you know, because I'm nervous. And, you know, something about a father's prayer. So I was sitting there, I was thinking about Jesus when he was talking to Peter and how he said that the devil desires to sift you as wheat. He said the most beautiful words I think he's ever said. He said, I prayed for you. I don't know, something about when your father prays for you. So still kind of nervous, but I think it worked. <laughs> On a side note, Mom, if you end up watching this, I promise I earned my shirt, but it was an hour drive, and I was playing two services, so it's a little wrinkled, that's why. So, um, I love about myself. I was born in a good Christian home. My parents, everything my parents did, right or wrong, was so my brother and I would go to heaven. That's all they cared about. They didn't care if we were astronauts. They didn't care if we were janitors. They didn't care if we were ever. They just wanted us to go to heaven. So... They loved us very much. That's how I knew they loved us. And um, so by the time I was five, though, um, I was being babysit by a husband and wife. And uh, I don't really know the details of it because I blacked a lot of it out. All I can really remember is like being led down the hallway by the husband, like in my underwear with his hand on my back, just like the small on my back. So it was, that's all I can remember. I don't, I think that God realizes that I couldn't handle it. I knew exactly what happened. So that created walls. And it's, I've been thinking about a lot of this COVID thing. I'm tired of wearing like these masks. It's good to my nerves. But I've worn a mask my whole life. I was anything to keep you, whoever, from seeing the real me. Because I've said it before that if you don't know who I am, you can't hurt something that's not real. So if I have a mask on, you can maybe hurt that person. You can maybe hurt the person wearing the mask, but you can't hurt, you couldn't hurt me. Because I was never going to be hurt again. And so, which kind of <laughs> created this, I don't know, catch-22, because I long for to be loved. I long for, you know, to be close, to be vulnerable, to be open, but I was scared to death of it more than anything in my life. I, was, I, I feared rejection so hard and so much that, I just didn't like pain, and that, you know, I was a good kid growing up. I never, I drank like one time, a couple times for high school, smoked pot once for high school, or before it ended, before I graduated, and it wasn't really until the summer after I graduated that I started smoking on a regular basis, and then I turned 19, and a guy came in to where I was working, and he was with a buddy of his, and was a buddy, we had a mutual friend, and he just, anyway, it was needless to say that that's uh, it was the first time I did coke, cocaine, and my life was never really the same, and I've just been thinking a lot about that five-year-old boy, you know, being led down the hall. It's how, I, it's how I spent most of my life, that five-year-old kid just being led down the hall. Then it got to a point, I guess, in my 20s and early 30s that he didn't have to lead me anymore, you know. I went on my own accord, and I, I wanted so bad, like, to get out. Like, it was a time where I just knew, I didn't know that I was hurting the people around me. Then I knew that I didn't care that I was hurting the people around me. Then I knew and I cared that I was hurting the people around me, but I, I couldn't stop. And it's just so heavy. The mask, mask gets so heavy. Um, they say heavy is the head that wears the crown. I say heavy is the head that wears the mask. And so I tried different programs, Christian programs, they were good, you know, year-long programs, like regimented, they took a, a couple of them, or a lot, they took a lot of the stuff from Teen Challenge, because it, it works, and just, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't, I didn't do what I had to do, and so I remember coming to Teen Challenge, about four months before I came to Teen Challenge, December 13th, I overdosed, and I died for like two minutes, I woke up in a EMT, and I thought I was kidnapped, and they were like performing like I don't know, stuff on me. I didn't know what they were doing. It was crazy. Like, it's like, you know, I was like freaking out. I was like, you guys are trying to kill me. They were like, actually, we just saved your life. So um, it's still used the next morning. It didn't stop. And uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't want to take the mask off because reality was far, far more scary. And um, I never really knew who I was growing up, thus the mask. And, you know, 
So I, didn't, I wanted to know who I was, and the drugs made it easier not to care. And, and on a side note, I remember some nights laying in bed, like, like just out of my mind, and just God's, God, God would visit me in that condition just to tell me that he loved me. And just, uh, you know, that song, Waymaker, so this is the best part, my, best, my favorite part of that song is when it says, that is who you are. It's not what he does. He doesn't do those things. He is those things. And I wanted so bad to have a relationship with him. And then I came to Teen Challenge, and, you know, long story, a little shorter, that God, get, God told me who I was. And um, I never felt, like I said, safe anywhere, never felt secure. That's, my, that's what I love about Teen Challenge. We have a chapel over there, and I've gone through some hurt, you know, since I've been there, but I could always go and feel safe. And one night I had to spend the night there because of some stuff that happened. And I just, I was the only place I ever felt safe. And, uh, and God, God created that, and thank God for people like Pastor Bob and Greg Paul and, you know, and just people that I don't even know, faces in the crowd, but for prayers. I don't know if anyone has any kids or know anybody that's in addiction. Pray for them. Because I would be a dead man without my mom's prayers. Don't give up hope. As long as there's breath, there's hope. As long as they're breathing, there's hope. I don't care what it looks like. My parents never gave up on me. My family never, don't ever give up on them. Never. So, anyway, um, yeah, thanks. Sorry. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I have just been so blessed thus far. Um, I was thinking in between services just... uh, about transformation and how it's so different from just a change and how I have been transformed. Um, I feel like at one point I was the woman with the issue of blood and I had to just get on my knees and crawl and touch the hem of Jesus's garment for him to heal me. Uh, I did not walk through the doors of the Hoving Home Teen Challenge like this. I was an addiction. I loved smoking crack and shooting heroin because it numbed all of my pain. It uh, closed my memory off to being raped and abused from the age of seven by family members. And um, just all of the lies because we went to church every Sunday and I sang in a gospel group, but all of the things that were happening in the house and how I had to just stay quiet. And I thank God for his strength today to be able to break those curses and uh, build a legacy. And I have a daughter, her name is Angel. She's 12 and I abandoned her in my addiction when she was six and now we have full restoration. So, um, yeah, one of my one of my favorite scriptures is Ecclesiastes 311. He has made everything beautiful in its own time. And so when I went into the doors of the Hoving home, I had uh, three months before that I had been shot in the face with a frozen paintball. I woke up two days later in a trauma center and the surgeon could not figure out how it did not shatter my skull. But God, I had overdosed and um, like Brother Jared, I had coded and God had a plan for me. And. He truly uses the foolish things because if anybody would have told me that me at 87 pounds with track marks up my arms and smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, weighing weighing 87 pounds, like I just can't even wrap my mind around how I was alive when I walked through the doors of the ministry. But if anybody would have told me that today I would be using that rape to bring God glory, that I would be using that abuse to bring God glory, that I would be using having a prosthetic to tell people this prosthetic is nothing because my vision that I have, I have sight beyond what I can see. I can love these ladies through their pain. And I I don't have to get up and come to work every morning. I get to get up and do this every day. You can't do it for a paycheck. You have to be called to it, but I get to do this. And what a privilege it is that like Job, God entrusts me 
he trusts his servant. And so all the things that the devil had on me, God's like, go ahead, try her, but she's not going to fold. And so I stand here today, just not even with the victim mentality anymore. And I get to teach these ladies and lead by example and victory. Thank you for letting me share. What is reality? Reality is feeling so ugly you sleep with anyone who'll give you the chance, just so you can feel beautiful. Reality is being so angry about having no say in your own life, you turn to drugs to numb your bitterness. Reality, being so hopeless that you try to drink yourself to death every night, fully convincing yourself that you're not worth saving and that you deserve to die. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. What is reality? Reality is countless nights spent with random men trying to feel wanted, pretty, and loved. Trying to feel anything at all, but you feel absolutely nothing. Reality is allowing your addiction to leave your family hurt and broken completely destroying your marriage and treating your children like a burden. Reality is drowning yourself in alcohol every day to try to forget your insecurities, heartache, pain, and guilt. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. What is reality? Reality is feeling so broken and empty inside after the death of your husband that you try to fill that spot with anything or anybody. You not only turn your back on God, but your children too as you live a life of an addict. Reality is waking up in the middle of the night to a fist being slammed to your face, having a broken nose, broken jaw, and broken ribs, and you stay with that man because you think that's what you deserve. Reality is being admitted into the hospital with heart failure, respiratory failure, and kidney failure, and being told you only have 24 hours to live. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. Truth is, I'm God's beautiful creation, and I don't need to be validated by anyone else. <laughs> truth is, I don't need control in my life. I gave it all to God. Truth is, I have hope in Jesus Christ and his promises for me and my life. The truth is, I am a beautiful daughter of God and he has filled my emptiness with his unconditional love for me. Truth is, God and God alone is fixing the brokenness in my family. I'm now able to rebuild my relationship with my children and God, he's restoring my marriage to how he always intended it to be. <laughs> Truth is, God is doing a new work in my life. I've been able to forgive myself for mistakes in my past because his grace, it's sufficient for me. And through that grace, I am an overcomer. Truth is, God is the only one that can take away that pain and fill that emptiness. Through Him, I have found forgiveness and my relationship with my children has been restored. Truth is, my worth is found in Christ alone. Through Him, my shame and guilt is behind me and I am living a full life. Truth is, I was in the hospital for seven months fighting for my life. But God, He healed my body completely and He continues to touch my life every single day. That is why my life verse comes from Psalm 118. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. As Jesus said in John 8, 31, 32, if you hold to my teachings, then you are truly my disciple then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free.
Can you guys hear me? Okay. Well, at first I was going to need this, but guess what? Now I don't need it. And that's God. That, that, that's not me. So thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Pastor Bruce. Um, truth is, sin abounds. That's truth. Sin abounds. Reality. But the grace of God does more abound. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, mm, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Apostle Paul says this. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> There's a passage of scripture in Philippians where it, it talks about, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I, I just came today to just to encourage you that in this time of, of, of what might seem to be lack, in this time of distress, in this time of disorder, with all the things that are going on in the world, I want you to understand that, that God is still on the throne and he is still doing miracles. Listen, his grace does yet abound. See, we have that assurance that when the world is chaotic and when there are so many things going on that are contrary to the word of God, we have the assurance that God is still working. Like that song says, even when I don't see him, he's still working. When I don't know it, he's still moving. Church, I want to encourage you today to understand that in the midst of this season, God is still moving. He's still doing miracles. Not that I speak in regard to need, the Apostle Paul said, that I've learned that whatever state I'm in to be content. Listen, regardless of what the world is saying, regardless of what is going on, how we get to that, that, that point where we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, listen, that's a mindset. We need to understand that that word that says that, that I, I walk by faith and not by sight, that's where that comes in at. See, because no matter what is going on around me, no matter what the turmoil is, Paul understood that he had what he needed for every single situation, every circumstance, everything that he would ever encounter. Listen, we have that same promise. No matter what's going on, no matter the circumstance, no matter if you have a, a loved one on drug addiction, like, like, like Jared said, pray for him. Because guess what? God is still yet moving. He desires to deliver and set free the captives. Guess what? That's what he came for. We want to assure you today that every testimony that you've heard, every amen, every thank you, Jesus, that was made possible by the blood of the Lamb, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He's yet still on the throne. Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Guess what? I beseech you. He's, he's saying, I'm begging you by the mercies of God. Guess what? That thing that I don't even deserve. I don't, I don't deserve. Guess what? I don't deserve to be here through COVID. But God. But God. I don't deserve to be here through a drug addiction. 20 plus years. Before I came to Teen Challenge, I lost everything. But God. He never gave up on me. And guess what? He's not giving up on you, even in this time. Church, never lose your joy. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength, even now. Listen, what separates us from the world? Our love for one another and our love for the world, because Jesus loved them. Listen, we can't love without that joy. He's got to do it through us. So even now, church, keep your joy. Keep serving. Keep doing the things you need to do. And guess what? Our joy isn't dependent upon our circumstances, our situation. Because like Paul, we have what we need. In Jesus Christ, I can do all things through Christ. It's through that relationship. That relationship with him. We can never forget that. One of the reasons why, I shouldn't say one of the reasons, the reason why Team Challenge has been so successful, not only in Seaford, but across the world, across the globe, is because of this one thing. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the afternoon. Jesus at night. That's the reason why. 
That's the reason why you can see these ladies and these men stand up here and say what they can say to you is because of what Jesus did and because of what he's doing. All we do is point them in the right direction. We try to come alongside them and, and help them and educate them and allow them to get to a point that where they can go to the throne and open their hearts and lay it before the Lord and allow him to come in and make the changes that he needs to do. Guess what? That has to happen on a daily basis. That's for all of us as believers. We got to die to self daily. And we teach that at Teen Challenge. We teach them that it's the relationship with Christ that makes the difference. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Church, even now, we need to still live for the Lord. You know why people are going to continue to come to the Lord? It's because we're going to continue to live it out. Not, we're not just going to talk it. We're going to continue to live it out. We got to live out this faith. We got to live it out. Even now, more so now, this is the time. Be ye not weary in well-doing. Let's keep going, church. The enemy wants us to stay shut up. He wants us to keep our mouths closed. He wants us not to say anything. He wants us not to pray for people. If God puts it on your heart to pray for somebody, pray for them. In this season, now, sin abounds, but grace does more abound. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. That's the least we can do. And be not conformed to this world. Listen, there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of things that are going on in the world, and they want us to conform to their thought processes. They want us to conform with the things that they would have us to do. They don't want us to talk about Jesus. They don't want you to say the word. You can say any, any name, any religion you want to, but as soon as you talk about Jesus, they want to shut us up. But I heard somebody say, it, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Listen, how can I not praise the Lord? Do you know what he's done for me, for you, for these women, for these men? He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. He gave up his life. They couldn't take it for me and for you. Come on, church. Let's live it out. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you prevent your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, our transformation comes when we spend time with the Lord. That's where it comes, spending time with the Lord. Because when we walk out there, we don't need them to see us. We need them to see Jesus. Because guess what? I can't, I can't love the way Jesus loved. You say something crazy to me, I want to say something back. But guess what? That's not the Lord. So I need him. I got to have him. Listen, we got to spend time with the Lord on your knees, in your car, when you're driving. It doesn't matter where you spend time. Just make sure you spend time because transformation comes by the renewing of the mind. And the renewing of the mind comes by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? By the word of God. Let me share this with you. And I know I've probably done this, this poem before. And uh, I mean, I have so many poems that I, that I can do, but this is a poem that, that I was asked to do. So I'm going to do it for you again. And it, mean, it means so much to me because this is my, my attempt to, to just share who God is to me. And, and what dawned on me in the process of doing it is that no matter what I say, no matter what I come up with, no matter how elegant it might sound, It'll never be enough for who God is and what he's done in my life. If I could wrap my mind around a being who has no beginning or an end and has the power to save and even dwell within, this is where I would begin. From an understanding that has no chance of understanding or comprehending the incomprehensible God who has created the heavens and the earth, the same being that conversed within himself and from his image gave mankind his birth. So intent and faithful in loving his creation that it is he and he alone who has determined our worth. You see, he is a being so holy and so glorious that in our current state, we can't even gaze upon his face. 
So he has revealed himself in the volume of the book so that we might have a chance to receive his grace. You see, he is an entity so expansive and so knowledgeable that he has orchestrated every minute movement of life in all creation to the tune of one accord. So infinite and so unsearchable that the beginning of knowledge and wisdom starts with the fear and reverence of our God and Lord. You see, he is a being that reigns in absolute sovereignty, and one word from his mouth can give life or cut like a thousand swords. And yet, he has chosen the foolish things of this world to exalt his name. You see, his word sets the heart on fire with unquenchable flames, and the true measure of his love is to behold the cross and its blood-soaked stains. You see, the Father placed us in Christ so we died with him, so that in life we rise with him. There is no other name by which we can be saved, so our future lies with him. He has separated us from this world, but I used to be just like them, denying the creator as if I wasn't made for something higher, not understanding that to live my life for self was to live my life stuck in the muck and mire, and that it was Jesus and Jesus alone that held my hand and kept my soul from sinking deep into the pits of hell fire. And it's because of him and him alone that I stand before you shouting, Hallelujah! Because for him, there is no praise that's higher. You see, he is the king of kings. He is the prince of peace. He is the sacrificial lamb. He is the lion of Judah. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my Messiah. If I could wrap my mind around a being who has no beginning or an end and has the power to save and even dwell within, the Bible is where I would begin. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!